there were a couple of really hot contenders. The two runners up were the TCL uh, P series. Um, it's a five, a fifty-five inch four K uh, HDR TV that you can get for less than six. So you've been really on this one like for the last few months. Mm-hmm. It's for how much? Less than six hundred bucks. Wow! Yeah. Go buy it right now. Damn, I kind of want it. That's not even it. on yeah. sale. That's just like that's its just price. its price. It's like six. That's impressive. Yeah. And on sale, it'll be under six hundred. There's a Roku outfit TV. It's right? a. It got Roku built in. Yeah, it's a Roku TV. I'm, I'm gonna buy that tonight. It looks. It looks yeah. awesome. <laughs> um, and then um, we still have one here. Actually, yep. if you want to get a good look at it, um, and then Roku Streaming Stick Plus. You can get that thing. I think it was running down as low as like forty five, fifty dollars during the Black Friday, Cyber Monday week, and. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just the best like add-on streamer you can get. Even if you have a smart TV, unless you just are absolutely in love with that smart TV interface, uh, Roku is the yeah. ish. Um, and it helps you find whatever you want to watch. You just put something in, and it'll tell you if it's on Netflix, Amazon, Hulu, Vudu, whatever. Not only that, but it'll tell you how much it is. Um, it's so it's so easy to use. Your grandma can totally figure it out. And you know, it knows no age limit, and you can take it to the hotel, yeah. take it to the dorm room. You can watch your TV anywhere you want. It's just, it's amazing. It's one of those stocking stuffer devices that you'll be, you'll like open it and be like, oh my God, this is great, you know? <laughs> It'd be it's, like one of your favorite gifts. But after, if, at stocking, 50 or right. 60 bucks, if you're like, what do I get for the tech person who has yeah. everything? Probably get them a streaming stick plus. It's just really awesome. Yeah. Plus, it'll control your TV's power and volume. You don't even have to have your TV remote around anymore with this thing. Oh, that's cool. Because I have one of the older sticks and the remote doesn't do the volume. Yeah, no, that's a newer that's a newer feature. still nice, though. I love my Roku stick that I have. So, I mean, when something's only 60 bucks and it does all that stuff, to, do you make yeah. it the product of the year instead of the C7 OLED? And it comes with the universal or? remote, which is in, what a deal for that thing. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to make those yeah. kind of decisions, but that's where I landed for my second. I, I got a question for you, Caleb. Mm-hmm. So this is the third year in a row, correct, that you have picked an LG I was going to add the one or yeah. As yeah, the best product of the year. Almost what, seems what is, like on their payroll. What is what is LG doing that other TV manufacturers are not? Like well, why is their stuff so good year after year? Well, in until um, January when Sony came out with their OLED, they were the only ones making one. Okay. And it's the best TV technology out there. So no matter um, the price in years past, it was just because they were the only ones doing OLED, it was like this is just the best TV hands down, there's no competition. Yep, they got the jump. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and now uh, the only reason the Sony didn't get it this year because their design elements were amazing was just because it was too expensive for yep. most people. Gotcha. And no, if cost was no object, I'd still have to go with the wallpaper OLED. You guys yeah, saw right, that yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, it's literally magnetized <laughs> yeah. to your wall. It's it, it's, it's paper thin, um, unreal TV. Like nobody can look at that and not just go wow. So yeah. in other words, competition is heating up. Like it might not be LG next year. No, it might not be LG for CES twenty eighteen. Okay. Right. They got it three years in a row. They've proven, um, you know, uh, I can't talk too much, but I'm already starting to see what uh, what different TV manufacturers mm-hmm. are going to be bringing um, this year. And I think that um, there's a lot of competition this year. Well, and I want to say, too, for everybody watching, if you have questions, go ahead and drop those into the chat. Somebody just asked. I'll just send you the question direct. Why don't TVs have picture in picture anymore? That's a really good question. Um, I think it's because more often than not, the TV is not doing the tuning, right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you have a um, – there are some TVs that still have it, but you've got to use oh, an gotcha. antenna. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, your cable box is what determines whether or not you get picture-in-picture. Picture. Your cable box mm-hmm. is only sending one signal to the TV. Where is mm-hmm. it going to get the other station? <coughs> right. Now, you could say, well, if I have an antenna and a cable box, why can't I do picture-in-picture picture there? Um, some TVs do a version of this, like you can bounce back and forth between – streaming Netflix and the football game Mm -hmm. uh, coming in through HDMI from a cable box. Um, And so you can still see, it will do picture in picture. And in fact, you can even zoom in on, uh, you know, certain aspects of the picture. Hmm. But yeah, uh, picture in picture, I just don't think was getting used that much. And uh, just like 3D, it went away. Yes, one of those things that went by the wayside. Yeah. Okay. All right, that that is interesting about it. So picture in picture was around for a long time, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Did you use it? Well, now, now, I I rarely, have now I want phones. it. But <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. That's the yeah, thing. that's so, true. Yeah, you can watch stuff on your phone. That's, absolu- that's absolutely right, though. Drew is dead on. Yeah. It's all about second screen. Have a yeah. laptop, your phone, and the television yeah. going. And no, I, d- I didn't use picture yeah. in picture that much. It, we, you couldn't ever really tell what was going on, you know? And you're not going to watch two sitcoms at the same time. It was used more for sports, I would imagine. Yeah. But watch if you're watching, or you watch two games, unless you could do split down the middle, but then you need a bigger TV. You can get those live sports updates on your phone or your exactly. tablet. 
and yeah. way more information. Yeah. Or just watch Red Zone and he like changes the channel for you whenever mm-hmm. you want. But well, so the LG C7 OLED series. That's it. OLED in particular was it one particular television? Just to make sure. The C7 is a series. Like a LG series, has. Yeah. Was there? Five so it's the whole series was best of. It, whether it's a 55 or 65. Gotcha. Was okay. that the one they have That's in their OLED sure room at CES where you stand mm-hmm. inside and they have like the thing going and mm-hmm. cool. All right, well, we've got a couple of other ones that we're going to highlight here. We talked about Bitcoin a lot at the beginning of the show. So we'll, we'll get through, though, um, talking about a couple of the best of products of 2017. I want to talk about Drew's next for emerging technologies because it's, this, it's a strange concept you know, with 3D printing. And I, I want you to do the explaining on this because I was trying to explain it even to Riley, who's producing behind the scenes. And I just read it, and I couldn't do a very good job of explaining <laughs> He's it. He's like, nibbler, like, stop it. It's like lasers <laughs> and uh, points, and there's dust or something. It's, it's 3D, <laughs> and there's they're, they're printing stuff. But it's not like a <laughs> traditional, yeah, you know, it's a <laughs> Lasers magic. and dust. Yeah, you know, and then you point it at things and yeah, it happens. Way to minimize. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Wow. And you can print anything you want. No, it's a it's, thing. Yeah, yeah. It's really, though, amazing compared to the, the old school 3D printers, which are, you know, old school. I'm uh-huh. using that as a term, but, you know, <laughs> where it's printing resin guard. on resin. Yeah. Like, this is completely different. Yeah, so um, it's called the Fuse One from Form Labs. And uh, it's, like you said, it's different than the 3D printers that you've probably seen. The ones that have been around for a while and that you may have seen on the internet are kind of like robotic hot glue guns. They take a filament of plastic and they basically just move it around, create two, like a really thin layer over and over again until they make a 3D object. Um, that's called FDM, f- uh, filament deposition modeling. I prefer hot resin on resin action. <laughs> <laughs> it's sexier, but whatever, filament But something. so, um, <laughs> this... Um, technology that Formlabs has taken is called SLS, Selective Laser Sintering. And the way that this works and makes 3D objects is it takes a bed of ultra-fine powder, nylon powder to be specific, and it heats it up and then it flashes a laser over the top of it to basically fuse those particles together. It doesn't melt them, but they just stick together. And uh, after it does that, it sweeps another layer of fine powder and then it does that over and over again and the object kind of disappears below into like this little sand trap. But then after that, you can take it out, blow off all the dust and you have like a perfect object. And the thing about this technology is prior to this machine, the Fuse 1, that tech was only available in like on industrial levels. So you could only get it if you dished out like $100,000 or more. This machine is $10,000. So it's you know, 10 times cheaper, makes it approachable for people that are, you know, probably, you're not going to have this in your living room. Unless yeah. you're no, just, but small business owners can exactly. totally use And it. that's really the, the big thing here. Like, you're probably not going to have one in your workshop, but uh, the thing that I said in our awards is, you know, you might actually end up having something that was produced by this, like, from your next, like, Kickstarter backing. Like, right, for the right. next project right. you back on Kickstarter could, pre- could potentially be produced in one of these machines. I could see that just to come buy one of those. Because instead of outsourcing manufacturing to some like, you know, factory in Shenzhen, a small startup could ostensibly just get like a fleet of these things and do all of their production in-house. And that's the thing. These the 3D printers that you have right now that are, you know, just squirting out plastic filament, they don't really make particularly mm-hmm. high quality parts. This thing can produce like production quality parts out of nylon. So a, you can't see, like, every tiny little layer in them. They're extremely strong. They're almost as good as, like, injection-molded parts or parts that were milled down from, like, a solid billet of, you know, plastic or steel or something like that. So it's really a big, like, step forward for 3D printing, which is why I picked it for this uh, year's product of the year. I always make fun of 3D printers, but when you start mm-hmm. talking about, like, legitimately putting prototyping in people's hands yeah. without having to go to these huge companies, that's that's – gigantic for product development that's real innovation in the hands of the innovators and the application can be used in a wide variety of ways like you said in businesses i was up in seattle and we did a story on this helmet company called vices they're making the new concussion oh, yeah, yeah. helmets they have a form that's printed to print out some prototypes of their like of their face masks and of the helmets themselves and of like the the columns they put in between the helmet and like the padding. and that's and that's crucial for research and yeah. development and like you know developing products because before they did that they'd have to you know make these molds and these mock-ups yep. and then send it off to somewhere else wait right. a couple of weeks right troubleshoot over there like the whole process has just become so much faster yeah. I mean even if you just had a company that bought one of these just for that for people's kickstarters yeah. or their ideas you know and go there you pay a set itself. fee yeah. yeah you know it's yeah. it's two hundred bucks to get this printed yeah, here's some prototypes for you right? yeah so. Just Drew, how long until like 3D printers can be scaled up to make really big parts, like car parts and stuff like that? Do you think I mean, you they can like unsettle the current car production market? So those printers already exist right now. They're just not like on the consumer level mm-hmm. or like kind of the prosumer level that like this 
ten thousand dollar. They exist, but are they being used? Like, oh, totally. Okay, they're, so like, like, there behind are the scenes houses, where we don't there's see there's selective. Like, yeah. There's like direct metal laser sintering printers that are making rocket engines and oh, all kinds bad. of stuff. It's it's completely changing manufacturing. Yeah. We're just not seeing a lot of it because it doesn't have a lot of use in like everyday life. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing about it is this stuff is really starting to trickle down to the consumer level. Just a few years ago, these um, selective laser sintering printers, and also there's another one called stereolithography, which is basically um, using a laser to cure like this liquid goop mm -hmm. photoreactive resin. Which I think looks Just really cool. Just a few years ago, those things didn't exist on a consumer level. I think it was like you know four or five years ago. You know, then they start coming through Kickstarter, and they're now those resin printers are everywhere. And I think pretty soon we're going to see these uh, these SLS printers that use the powder and the laser. Those are going to start making their way into the consumer's hands on a smaller scale. And that's going to make you, that's going to allow you to start making stuff in your house. You know, if this ever makes it into your house, yeah, you might not need to go to a store. If you need like a new bike pedal, just print one. You order like, the, you just go yeah, on the order the instructions it, or you know, something. You wait like a day or something. It'll probably still be pretty slow, but you know, yeah. it'll be there. The you won't have to leave your house. Too. How far out do you think it is before somebody could conceivably get one of these for like your own home printer? Like, it uh, uh, depends on price. Like, how much are you willing right. to pay if you're willing? <laughs> I mean, yeah, technically you could get one now. But, I mean, just for, for like, an average consumer, like, say, like, under 500 bucks, you could get an SLS. Like, how many years out are we? Uh, probably just like guessing. 10. 10 years? <laughs> pro that's that. a safe bet okay. right there. Because you're the investing in the, in, the, in the hardware that will continue to allow you to produce these, like, quality yeah, totally. goods, right? So it's like you making a cheap – you might not want a cheap one. You know, you want one yeah, that's going to be, true. Like, um, high quality construction so that it continues to pump out you know quality stuff for you was form labs who we talked to at ces last year they came by the yeah. booth and like i know from there they had like the the goop printer with us mm -hmm. and like just the level of detail they had that little rope. oh it, it makes every the and older like styles of 3d rope. printers yeah. look like you know they look like yeah. toys in comparison yeah. All right. So there we go. So that was the winning uh, product from the emerging technology section. Yeah. So form the uh, form labs fuse one printer. You can if read I was more looking about for that. a new career, I would be getting into the CAD designing space, like providing the the print instructions for these devices. Totally. And start building this huge catalog. Like imagine if your toilet breaks and you need a new freaking toilet handle. Why well, go to Home Depot? You know, or like the bike pedal, or now, there's a is there? Yeah, there's there's online repositories of 3D objects that people just like you know upload, like user based like, like millions content. of schematics. Like you, uh, you Thingiverse, right? Thingiverse yeah. is owned by MakerBot, or it was created by MakerBot, and it's probably the biggest one. But there's almost anything that you want hmm. on there. Like I have a 3D printed shower head that I just found on the internet and printed because <laughs> that's mine amazing. Broke. Yeah. Um, but like anything, like door stops, uh, screwdrivers, door handles, like, like, so yeah. pulled, like, there's yeah. so much little household crap that you could easily make with a 3D printer. So the more that this starts proliferating, like the more we're going to see that. Kind oh of yeah, absolutely. Buy. It's coming up slowly but surely. All, All right. right. Well, read more about that at digitaltrends.com. Let's go to the outdoor section. And again, if you're just yeah, tuning yeah. in, talking about some of the best of 2017 products here from Digital Trends for the highly contested lists that came out. And uh, Rick, for the outdoor section, this one, this is fascinating. The BioLite Fire Pit. Yeah, that's what it's <laughs> called, the Fire Pit. Yeah, the it is pretty pit. cool. <laughs> it's, uh, I got to see this in person so you can see here as well we've we've been big fans of biolite stuff for a while they won one of our awards when we did outdoor awards over the summer um, but this is a little bit different this is as its namesake it's a fire pit that you can have put, sort of a portable barbecue grill fire pit kind of thing and what it does is it allows you to use either coals or wood if you wanted to say fry up some burgers or hot dogs and use like uh -huh. a grill attachment and then you can lower that grill in and you have a fire pit as you can see here if you're watching on youtube um sort of creating like a little at-home bonfire or you can take it with you on the road and it uses this fan system that's attached to it that makes it entirely smokeless so once the fire gets going there's just, there's going to be no smoke and i saw that's this thing awesome. like in action with both coal and wood and there wasn't a hint of smoke once it gets going you turn that fan on it like you it, the tech that it uses dissipates that smoke so you don't have any of it at all and however much you set the fan either to be high or low you can either have like a widespread hot fire or something that's really small so there's like more of like an ambiance and something that's like really hot so is it so, because it's actively fanning it that it burns hotter yeah. and there's no smoke yeah. so it's going to burn that fuel faster somewhat I mean, but you, you can, can use less of it i was there for i think a couple hours you can use less but i was there for a couple hours and what it and it we didn't seem to use that many. We used like a bed of coals that we then put the grill into, and so the coals were still there, and then put like maybe three logs on, mm -hmm. and those burned for like maybe 45 minutes. Mm. 
right. and so and you go through wood a lot even if you're building a bonfire anyways at a campground mm -hmm. you know what's up Drew? question yes. so i know that their little camp stove yeah. has a like a waste heat recycler that basically stores a thermal electric energy. generator yeah, yeah so that you can plug in does this thing have that same it stuff? does not have the same because it would make Bummer. the price so much more so this All is only right. 200 bucks is the thing oh no way that's which a, is that's like insane slightly I'm more than one the, right one now. the little biolite stuff exactly okay, yeah and so yeah they would they took this to kickstarter and they made like 2.6 million dollars or something it was like insane wow their most um you know successful kickstarter i just went gangbusters on there but uh, yeah it's only 200 bucks and that's how much you can even pre-order them now for and if they had the thermal electric generator on there it would really jack that price up which is why the stoves so. are expensive you yeah. know gotcha uh, but that is a really cool aspect and that was one of the reasons why we picked the stove over the summer was that it used you can like plug your phone into it and recharge it and it literally just charges that battery by the heat of the fire that you're making. But I can imagine that down the road, if they're able to make it cheaper, you'll find this in the fire pit too. Dude, by the I same want kind of one technology. of those. They're awesome. For my car camping and glamping. They trips. showed me yeah. here. One of the designers lives in Portland, um, and I went over there and chatted with one of my PR contacts, and, and we cooked up some burgers, and like she showed me how it worked. I mean, it was I was like floored by how easy it was to use. At 200 bucks, too, I mean, that's insane. You could buy one like tonight, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but it's such an awesome application. You can take it down like for easy like campfires at home or bonfires. Or yeah, I was going to say, just whatever. backyard. Yeah. You know, just bring it out for the backyard. Absolutely. So do you bit. buy three of these kick-ass BioLite stoves or campfire things, or do you buy a 4K UHD TV? <laughs> <laughs> and that's the age-old question. Mm. Right? That's what we're trying to tell our consumers, right? People have been asking this question for decades <laughs> but no we tested how many was bitcoin is that <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's full like circle point zero zero three five yeah. bitcoin <laughs> but what's our tagline we tested 600 things this year or something and we it was it down to 600 some products right yeah. yeah and it is so hard i can only imagine to go through all those and i'm realizing what time it is so i know we need to wrap up but i did want to bring up the iPhone 10, which uh, you want to bring up Bitcoin to seventeen thousand. Mm. Bitcoin seventeen thousand dollars. You can buy how many iPhones with uh, <laughs> one point five iPhones with a with a Bitcoin. So iPhone 10. So the iPhone 10 was of course the the winner in the mobile section, which actually that is a pretty contested section as far as that. Totally. I think but Julian was actually blown away by the X when he, really? when he reviewed it. We have a, he wrote a hell of a review on it too for DT. Yeah. yeah. Um, Super thorough, but yeah, I mean, he was blown away. I think that as soon as he got it and was writing it, he was saying, this is the iPhone that you want. Like, don't worry about the price tag. Like, this is what you want, which is funny to say. <laughs> I will worry about the price <laughs> tag. <laughs> yeah. Don't tell me to know. I know, I know. $1,000. Right. Right. Let me that. live my life, Julian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a thousand bucks, but don't I know. Tell me what to do. Yeah, Brandon Witter just got one. He really liked it. I'm sure there's a ton of people. Yeah, I think Juan had one too. last week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Jack has one as well, so yeah. I don't so think it, does anyone here have one? No. No. I don't have one either. No. Yeah, I'm not going to pay $1,000, but I mean, I do want it. I can say that. Yes, yeah. I want it. I'm not going to pay for it. but <laughs> Give me one for free. I'm going to yeah. use it for a Absolutely. Like, yeah, I will use gonna, it. Uh, no. LG V30. I would love to have one of those. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <but laughs> the, this podcast brought to you by. <laughs> <laughs> that could be you. Yeah, right. no, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, the, the I vote 10, though. I mean, it, it is, it's a pretty incredible product. And I will say this just because it is in our headline. There are, of course, already rumors about the iPhones for 2018 on um, what they're going to do. Go figure. Following up. There's also, supposedly, there's going to be some... Uh, well, a couple of different things. And this is, I think it was the Wall Street <laughs> Journal and Nikkei came out with a couple of different rumors that they, they believe could be true. Uh, one was that they're going to expand them, make them bigger. They're going to make a bigger version, so a larger screen. Like an iPad? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the resolution is going to increase. They, they're talking about to... Um, to further enhance like their AR capabilities, augmented reality, vir that virtual would be reality. Okay, but if you're going to be spending twelve hundred dollars on it because of AR, like right, yeah. I, well, oh, I mean, they they have to do something with that because they have that whole department just for AR development. So that's one of the things. The other one is that they may go back to a slightly cheaper version with an LCD screen instead of OLED. Dude, I want to see Apple come out with a flip phone. <laughs> Legit, they would just sell, like they Samsung would sell did. Millions Samsung of them. just came out with a flip yeah. phone. And they've been, you know, uh, some would argue that they've been copying Samsung for a while. So we might as well just, you know, come out with the flip phone and do flip it like phone. so intentionally, so blatantly. <laughs> the I Samsung. You know, oh, shit, the I, big presentation. The I flip, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. We with know what people lighter. want. Yep. Yeah, right. And it, and Here it at Apple. Flip. We, yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> that almost. You know what? If we had uh, the, we had the votes a little bit uh, later this year for best tech product of 2017, mm -hmm. I totally would have gone dip clip. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't seen this, I have not seen the dip clip. I don't you know, know how some is. cell phone holders like attach to uh, the grills of your air vents yeah. in your in your car yeah. or whatever. This is a device that connects to the air vents just like you know a phone holder would, but it's designed specifically to hold 
the dip that you get from, say, McDonald's for your McNuggets. <laughs> and the, it's just, just the photo. Right. Yeah, it's right. just dunking yeah. it. That's pretty revolutionary yeah. technology right there. How is that not best We called of? it too early, man. Yeah. We, we, yeah. That it's, changes it's my life, switch. yo. Like, I got <laughs> my... something you can actually use. My left hand is already busy holding my McRib. How am I supposed <laughs> to dip going with my that. McNugget? I don't know where he's going. <laughs> my left hand's already busy holding my <laughs> McRib. <laughs> All right, it's only available <laughs> specific times throughout the year. It's not that big of a deal. We could be like the Oscars, though, and like have this rolling calendar where we, where we could think of the dip clip next year. Right, right. Because it released in whatever December or something. Well, yeah. who's to say I don't want to dip my McRib in some like honey mustard or something, <laughs> or just maybe extra barbecue sauce? I don't These, know. You know, you guys could, aren't thinking big enough. We could do a whole show just on the this, big dip, just clip. on the dip the clip. Big dip the clip. <laughs> it's like if you listen to it quickly, too. Dip clip sounds like a little bit like <laughs> dur- dirty. You know, it, it does. Yeah, I also thought maybe. It it was something for like you know if you're chewing Kodiak chewing? your dip clip. I totally putting. thought the same thing. I thought it was like <laughs> in a, you don't like have to holster. put a little bit yeah, between right. your cheek and gum. Get it out just my sort dip of clip. Like holds it yeah. there. You put cartridges in. Round proper company. Your back paint jeans pockets. Just well, thank you. <laughs> the keep dip that clip. oral canceler really focused to one little section of exactly. your mouth. Exactly. Yeah. That way you only have to have part of your cheek cut out instead of the whole thing. Well, that's a way to end it. All right. Yep. All right. Thanks, guys. There we go. Glad but you can 3D print a part of your cheek. Boom. That's the that's Done. the end bioprinting. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up for today. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Trends and Benefits. <laughs> Send us an email, podcast at digitaltrends.com. I did tease something about uh, a living tattoo. We'll cover that next week. So you can tune in next to next week's episode. Uh, subscribe wherever you get podcasts. iTunes, Stitcher, all of those places. Subscribe to Trends with Benefits and all the other podcasts here at Digital Trends. Thanks for watching, and we'll be back next week with another episode. And show your appreciation for our podcast with Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yes, please. I would love it. <laughs> Only I had to bite my tongue so hard to not make a McRibbed for her pleasure. Oh, my God. How many times have I made that joke?